Ching. Hello, welcome back to uh, episode three. 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 Of uh, no, no Critics Could Have Given podcast. We didn't think we'd get this far. So, <laughs> thank you. Thank it's you for sticking around. Um, let's get the uh, the obvious things out of the way. We've upgraded. Yeah. Look at this. This was a pipe dream this weeks ago. Fancy. And this is... We, we, we saw this and was like, yeah, we've got to do that. So, we are now back in a studio. Rather than my kitchen, we're here. <laughs> we're in the studio. So, this is hopefully where we're going to be for the, for the future. This is us now. Hopefully... <laughs> providing the edit's gone well <laughs> we hope so. and it's not just a green screen behind us and we've done it well yeah this is this this is the plan this is this is is um i am ben from no Critics Given podcast uh, this is my good friend joe and we are going to try and talk to you today about um ways that you can keep your players engaged keep yourself engaged and just just go literally running off the back of what we spoke about last week in terms of in, in enhancing your game Ways that you can just make sure you're having a good time. Yeah, and I think part of it, I'm just going to jump straight in. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things that thoroughly that I know that keeps me engaged and involved in our sessions is having my backstory that I've created for my character incorporated into mm-hmm. into the scenes, into the different bits of dialogue. Yeah, uh, watching things develop. Um, as we know, D is one of my characters has got a metal arm, mm-hmm. quite ornately designed. Um, and just silly little things, even the in, in party jokes of yeah. one of our friends constantly trying to steal it, like yes. Rocket Raccoon. Yeah, <laughs> he has got the uh, bit of a magpie's eye for mm. things that are shiny, aren't they? I'd, above any or anything else, if you're if I'm DMing and the sessions I have DM'd, I think it's polite to include <laughs> people's backstories and say if you if I've got a player that spent literally hours writing this yeah. crap and crafting this character and giving them deep back lore and back history and character interactions already it's only sort of fair to include it rather than going well thank you for all your work but that doesn't matter I'm going to do my own thing it's quite good it, it, it does it does feel really good when something happens and it's a callback to your or you meet an NPC that yeah. is from your backstory or stuff like that it's just, it's just really engaging and part of the process of when you first become attached to your character is when you start writing it Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is the moment where you start thinking about right. This is what this person's been through. This is what their outlook on life is. This is what their goals are. Yeah, and that's when you first start forming that attachment. And there's nothing nicer than having those things pulled on at different points by the yeah. DM. Yeah, that's it. And thinking everything you've put down on paper is actually getting evolved. Yeah. and made into something, and you can. Vis- visualise it and see it happening in front of you yeah it's good it's a really it is a really good way of getting keeping your players engaged or keeping yourself engaged yeah. I would from a I mean a lot of these points might be a bit DM heavy as we have both DM'd recently um, but from a player's point of view taking your time to write that backstory is quite important because yeah. otherwise we have one of well for example one of the lads smashed together a character quickly in 10 minutes come session well in session zero because our first session of the campaign proper was weeks later, he had no drive to play it, no ambition to play it. But some people like myself and you, who have developed these backstories and mm. these deep histories of these characters, there's no way in hell we were going, ah, oh, no, actually. We're in a situation now where <laughs> one of us might be taking over DMing <laughs> one of the campaigns we've got, and both of us are there going, well, we, we want to play our characters. Yeah. So... <laughs> You get involved with it, don't you? And you, do. you get really attached to your characters. And like I say, it's that whole crafting a story, mm-hmm. um, which is your first sort of dipping your toe in of connecting with your character. Yeah. And yeah, like, like you say, a part of that is that we've now developed these characters and from their backstories have now linked in and they're yeah. starting to form a friendship. And it makes you just want to go, no, I don't want to lose. Yeah. I don't want to lose. I want to yeah, see where do. this goes. You get, especially because the, the two characters in question are our first characters. Yeah. So we're still playing all this time later and we're like, we don't want to. Yeah, and also, from if you're a DM and you like a bit of world building and you like to, your worlds to feel lived in and, and you want your place to feel a part of it and feel like they belong, and rather than just being dropped, airlifted into a random mm. world, including their backstories and having them have previous relationships and adventures and that before even if you're starting your you're starting your campaign at a higher level a yeah. full on career not it makes you as a dm feel included and feel really 
almost part of the team. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Rather than us and them, you're almost, it's just a group of people around a table yeah. sharing a story. It's it's really good. I love, I, I love a good backstory. Oh no, I think it's one of those things, if you've done right and incorporated well, it, yeah. it, it needs to just be, enhances the whole thing. It does. They do need to be kept in check sometimes because we can all write backstories when we've got, <laughs> we've got 15 <laughs> magical items and this, this piece of armour that doesn't, <clears throat> means you can't get within 14 foot of me. And yeah. So we, <laughs> we can all write that, but it does. It, and to be honest, with balancing a backstory and the character yeah. is, is a good part of it as well. It's really good. And, and then again, you know, like I said, when it comes down to DM, being able to extract the right pieces of information from a backstory and then incorporate it mm -hmm. in the right way just brings everyone in. Yeah. yeah and you can bring everyone in around the table and then you get those people that go, whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that's, that's for my character. That's yeah. happening for me. It's always there's always a um, uh, there's an example from our campaign was when we needed to find a witch doctor. We still need to actually we still need to go and find that witch doctor. Yeah. But I had previously met a witch doctor from my years of being a pirate lord and sailing the magical seas and everything. But now, oh, actually, that interaction you had 20 years ago is actually going to come in quite handy here, and it's really good. Again, just having that that thing plucked from your backstory and go, especially when you don't know, like you just said, when the when you don't know the DM's going to drop your ex-wife <laughs> <laughs> into oh. a campaign. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 you're it. Okay, uh, yeah, child and child maintenance again. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, but backstories, Inclu including your players' backstories. We've lost Joe. <laughs> It's good that it tickled me. I like yeah. that. I like that. Definitely need to build that into a campaign somewhere. Got someone's ex wife. Yeah. <laughs> someone's ex wife turns up for some maintenance. That'd be. Uh... We've just. We've just a six year old. <laughs> like, not divorced you know, six years ago. You can either take him as part of your party <laughs> and include him or give me some money. And then, depending on what the party did, that could be very interesting. Write that down. We'll do that. One of our stick many. A, stick a pin in that. One, one of we'll our many stories will feature somebody's ex wife. That is a great way to do it. But all of it, of everything we've just said, is part of enhancing yeah, point the two. overall gameplay. Point number two. I mean, we, we, we're going to be a bit cheeky and say we've, we've written five points. This one's not not necessarily a massive point because we did a big, video, a big episode on it last week. Yeah. But enhancing your gameplay and doing these little bits that you can include to make your players... Um, feel, I keep saying feel included, that's not the word I want. But enjoy it, feel... Um, Feel part of the world. Feel part suppose. of the world. There is a word I'm looking for, and it's going to do my head in. This will be good. Oh. There'll be no captivated. Edits. Oh, there we go. Captivated to get your players captivated and think this is really good, and I'm enjoying it. And it's not just things like we, we mentioned last week, like Tailspire, like your own minis, yeah. like the resources you can get, so you've got a quick access to your mm -hmm. uh, abilities, like using people you found on TikTok so you can build good plots and you can build good stories and you need it you put them encounters in. It's just it's just a really good again, a really good way to keep your players involved, to get your players wanting to play. I think we've all been a part of a group that has a session zero, has a session one, and then it's like unless somebody makes a stand and goes, right, we're meeting Friday, nobody does anything. Yeah. But you, you want to you want to create that that almost that atmosphere of we need to play every day. Yeah. I think I could play every day. I, I don't think know about I, you. Yeah. I could definitely play this. If I didn't day. have other commitments, then yeah. I would be more than happy. To if, if you guys could start watching so that this could pay the bills, <laughs> we can play more D and D. I'm just gonna come out right yeah. and say yeah. it. Yeah. If you could pay our bills for us, <laughs> we could play more D and D, and then we'd have more insight to share with yeah. you. It's a, it's a it's a cycle. It's a cycle. <laughs> a cycle or a spiral? I'm not yeah. sure yet. It depends which way it goes. Cycle go up. And spiral go. Cycle goes round. So does a spiral? Well, it's all very confusing. Yeah, all. Let us know, cycle or spiral, <coughs> down in the comments. Which boy, your, your life with D&D, did it spiral? <laughs> or did it cycle? That's what we want to know today. But yeah, that was a quick point. In time, enhancing your gameplay, making your feel, players feel entertained and enjoyment, and it just it's just going to make them, it's just going to make your sessions even better. Yeah. Point number three, and this is a big one. <laughs> I've watched a lot of stuff online. I've played a lot of stuff. Given we only we only started playing D and D about a year ago, we've played a lot of D and D. Yeah, we have. Yeah. To be fair, crammed a lot in. Yeah. So combat. 
I under I can I completely understand, and I think I was probably guilty of this when I started DM. And it's very easy to get bogged down with uh, initiative order this turn, 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 and then because you've got a party of six and there's four factions that are all taking their turns on their own time, so you get like 10, 11, 12 turns during one round of the yeah. one round of the table. When you when my brand goes first in initiative quite a lot, mm-hmm. and I plan my turn and I do my turn, and then it can be a good fifteen minutes before it gets back. It's that that lull in between there is the bit of combat we we're talking about now, and keeping them players engaged while they're waiting for their next turn, mm-hmm. while they're seeing what's going on. Because we've all we've, we've all had that urge to pull a phone out. I'll just check the messages. I'll yeah. ignore that call from the next one. <laughs> <laughs> But if you can find a way to keep your characters interesting, keep your players focused and enjoying it so that they want to it, combat will be a lot better. Which is something I tried to do. You did. <clears throat> and you successfully tried uh, to it do. It was one of those things that I didn't know. It was either going to either gonna work or not work. It was going to mm-hmm. be really good. People thought it was okay. Or people were just going to think it was silly. Mm-hmm. Um, and the idea behind it was that during the part of the campaign that I was DMing, the party had split up into two, two groups to try and infiltrate a building and within the process of doing so, each group ran into some enemy contacts which they obviously had to fight. Mm-hmm. Um, my idea to try and keep everyone involved in combat was not just to focus on group A and do their combat and then go back to group B and do their combat. Mm-hmm. In my head it wanted to be almost like a scene from a film or a TV show where you would see group A do their combat a little mm-hmm. bit, they'd get a few turns in, and then bang, we swap to group B. Yeah. And group B did their combat. They do a few little bits, maybe mm-hmm. they only do one move, bang, we go back to group A, and yeah. the next thing happens. Yeah. And I'd say hopefully it worked, but my idea was that it kept everyone involved. Sort of, and this is a positive note, on edge. Because <laughs> it does support. We had initiative order, we were following initiative order, but cutting in and out at the same time so things that were happening at the front of this store were impacting the way we were acting inside yeah. and then the things we were doing inside impacted the way the the guy out the front was uh, acting out the front and it it worked really well because it it kept that movie scene sort of cinematic mm. in all of our heads we weren't using Tales by for this campaign so it was all theory of the imagination and it added, it added to that it added people to sort of visualise it the same way and know what was going on. But at the same time, it developed, the, the combat itself developed because of that. So it wasn't just, right, we'll go to we'll go to inside. Okay, so then it's Lardist and Sea Winds, your turn, then the droids, and then we'll cut back out front. It was a case of, well, because you've done that, this has happened out there. And then there was the decisions to be made, oh, we're going, do we go out the front? Do, does... Um, Zanzibar? Yeah, Zanzibar. Danzibar. Zanzibar is the thing from Tenacious D song. Yeah, Danzibar. Does Danzibar come in? Is he going to chase this guy? Are we going to chase this guy? Do we... And it just made the whole combat entertaining and really, really just fun. Just a, just a lot of fun. And it's just them, them little things and them little tweaks that you can do as a DM that might not change the fundamentals of, of, of combat because mm-hmm. players like combat to be a certain way because we all set up our characters to do certain things in combat and then if that's taken away I think people get annoyed but in order to sort of and I don't like the term but spice it up Ooh. spice up combat make it a bit different maybe, maybe it's something as simple as introducing enemies more enemies later down the line yeah. introducing a fact that it is, doesn't necessarily have to be faction A the players faction B in the, to the death mm-hmm. one of them's going to try and escape at the end you can realise when you beat it's that old uh, video game trope is that I've just killed 15 of your friends, but this little grunt is the one that's going to take me out. No, in real, if realistically, that grunt would turn and run. Yeah. So we can, and then it makes it, make, it will make your players question: What do we need to do? Do we just need to kill them? We've had plenty of in, in of combats when we've tried to keep people alive yeah. for interrogation purposes and stuff like that, and it just <clears throat> it just makes people think about the combat, which then stops them getting dislodged from the game, stops them getting their phone out, stops them mm-hmm. ringing the misses, and you actually get through it, and everyone's, yeah. you don't, 
your session doesn't get broken up and you enjoy it and you're in there before you know it, you've been in you've been in there for five hours and it's been an amazing session <laughs> i know we've got some notes that we work off you may have noticed mm -hmm. um i'm gonna just completely disregard them right now <laughs> and uh go for something it's still related to combat uh -huh. and it's something that i've kind of learned to appreciate so the first session of that campaign that i was dm in there was zero combat there was none and that wasn't bad that wasn't a bad thing that was my next point yeah <laughs> no combat isn't necessarily a bad thing yeah and <clears throat> all the stuff that happened in that sort of what like two three hours that that went on for that first session oh yeah easy yeah um was all sort of story building meeting characters instance have things still happened mm -hmm. Um, but there was no combat, and I remember thinking, "Oh, are, are they going to enjoy it?" Oh, yeah. I've just done like they've just done two, three hours, no combat. I'll try and crowbar something at the mm. end. I didn't get time to, and I remember being very apologetic. Everyone, like, I'm sorry, there was no combat. It will be there first thing in the next session, um, and it was you, like you say, and you went, well, "It's not a bad thing." It doesn't. Just to play devil's advocate, I'm very aware that if your play group loves combat. And you set up every yeah. every we've done we've done sessions where it was literally a, a battlefield and a war on a battlefield, yeah. just as enjoyable. But, but if you're we we like to be quite narrative based, yeah. don't we? When when we do our sessions, something you may come to find out later down the line. A little bit of a tease for you there. But um, yeah, we're quite narrative based, so you don't you don't necessarily need combat, and combat doesn't need to be. 20 turns of epic mm -hmm. gameplay and turns to combat so I think at one point we nearly went into combat but then an, an intimidation check yeah like it might have even been first turn somebody went for doing intimidation yeah. and then it just completely dissolved the whole yeah. thing which was good in the narrative of it it made sense for Dan Zabar's character to do that mm -hmm. and have that trope and use it as this big daunting Mandalorian character <laughs> this scary we're doing a Star Wars campaign um, and it, 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 it added to the it added to the to, to the gameplay. It added to the narrative yeah. because if he if you get this big hulking, what class is he playing? It's a Jedi something, it isn't is it? It's a Jedi. I want to say Guardian. Sentinel. Guardian. I'm Sentinel. Well, this nebs of Jedi. I take a lot of attention to my players' characters, <laughs> as you can tell. Keep them very involved. Yeah, that's it. More involved than your DM might be at some point. Um, but it made more sense because if he'd have walked into this area. Done the intimidation and everyone had gone. Eh, no, yeah, it wouldn't have made sense. So, okay, some people like combat, and it would have been just as good if we'd gone to combat. But you're definitely right in saying that no combat. I think it's fair to say that no combat is probably better than boring combat. Yeah. Or monotonous combat. That's probably the better way of wording it. Yeah, yeah. I like that. It's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, because I was very much panicking towards the end, thinking I need to crowbar some in, mm. and it wouldn't have been interesting yeah it would have literally been me putting something out of the air to feel like I'd because it's like placated everyone we when we play because we don't just do homebrew stuff we do play stuff from, from wizards and from the books and in 5e there's this mechanic of when you're we're traveling for so long roll a dice see if anything pops up in Canada that's fine and I like that and that's straight out of a RPG mm -hmm. Um, very aware that these came before big RPGs for, for video games, but it's very much a random encounter, yep. attacked by a pack of wolves, goblin, you stumble upon a, a goblin den, whatever. I'm very aware of that, and it's awesome. But sometimes it doesn't. It's not needed. No, you can be head on, set on for a big encounter with the boss, mm -hmm. and on the way there you get jumped by goblins. Again, narrative type based players doesn't really make sense. So I think again, combat. It can be. It's not. It's, it's amazing, it's not always necessary, hmm. and find ways to make it interesting if you are doing combat in every session. I like it. No combat is better than boring combat. I might yeah. get that on a t-shirt. Write that down on our merch list. There's a merch <laughs> list now. We're three episodes, <laughs> three episodes in and everything's just coming we've out, got, isn't it? We've got a studio, we nearly had, a, we nearly had an audience, but he's running late. <laughs> We're doing some after recording. He's just gonna. Um, yeah, we've got a merch. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. We'll have a Discord and a Patreon for you. Know it's it. Be amazing. This is it. This is the future. Right. Point number four. Just shouted down the mic. Very, very apologetic for that. <laughs> NPCs. Rip everyone's ears. Yeah. I'll put. I'll put a sound warning. <laughs> Spoiler alert. You're about to get your ear burst. Right. Your drums ear. Ear drums burst. It's been a long day, people. It's a long hot weekend and. 
we're all tired. And I'm going to actually interject on that note before point four. Okay. Um, probably should have mentioned it earlier, but now seems an alright time in the middle. Mm. Why not? Um, video's out a bit later than normal. It is. A little bit later. Diff- well, a different day. Um, as yeah, It's been a long couple of weeks, everyone's been quite busy, but we was adamant that something mm-hmm. would go out and we'd get something made. Yeah. Uh, so it was really just an apology that it's not out on its normal time. I think, I think it might have even been a, a blessing in disguise, because I think if we'd have... If we'd have r- rushed around and got it out and got it recorded earlier in the week, one, the quality might not have been right there, and two, we wouldn't have had this palace. No podcast is better <laughs> than, than a boring, boring podcast. podcast. <laughs> Please watch our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is it for us if we, <laughs> if we can't make this work. <laughs> no, it we're very grateful for you for watching. It's, it's, uh, it's a bit... um, not the point I thought you were going to bring up, but all right. Well, now I'm intrigued. I thought you were going to mention your wound. Oh, no, I wasn't <laughs> going to mention my wound. So, yeah, if anyone has noticed, I'm not quite sure how noticeable it is, but I do have there, I believe. Yeah. Quite a nice shiner. Shiner? Yeah. It's been airsofting yeah. uh, today, so it's all been good fun. Yeah. But you did. You mentioned earlier you might mention it, so I thought I'd let our viewers on. No, it's fine. If you're going to laugh at me for knocking a hat off in episode one, we can all laugh <laughs> can at you. Look your... at me growing a second head. <laughs> just just like... Instead of flashbacks of Family Guy when Peter's got the twin on his <laughs> Ah, Right, should we move on? Four. Should we move on to point four? NPCs. This is a similar point to the, word, the original point in combat in that if you think of a world, if you think of, think of, the, best, think of the best RPG you've ever played. Whoa. I can tell you mine now, but I've not played as many RPGs as you have. I'm a big Witcher fan. Mine's Witcher 3. Witcher. Witcher 3. See, I don't know. That's a hard question. All right, well, my, my next point was going to be in there. Fallout New Vegas. Fallout New Vegas. That's a good call. Mm. That's a good call. Speaking of good heads, they've started Skyrim, <laughs> Skyrim again. Oh, don't blame me. Talk amongst yourselves. Uh, yeah, it's really good. <laughs> um, no, but what my point being is, in a good RPG and in any good story, in any good narrative, any good film, TV series, book, comic strip, play, characters or NPCs are unique. Yeah. They are different. They are entertaining you're not you're not going to see okay maybe in some 90s rpgs and early noughties you'd get a copy and paste response from people but you get a lot of variety and the people you meet mm-hmm. on your i'm gonna oh, sorry people you meet and um, on your adventure on your journey and i think that what that adds to that world building sort of oh, i was gonna say entrapment wow wow yeah um It makes you feel included in the world. I've said that four times now, and I didn't mean to. But I'm very aware that we we all watch Dimension 20, and we all watch Critical Role, and they do all these. They're they're professional voice actors, and they Mm -hmm. do all this stuff. It's incredible. When I say make your NPCs unique, I don't mean do a voice for every single one. If you can, fantastic. But I'm some NPCs. Some NPCs. Some DMs will get hung up on going. Well, I need to do voices to make them different to do that. You definitely don't. Mm-hmm. There are things and ways of writing your NPCs and acting them out that can make them mem- just make them memorable. Yeah. In the same way that we were talking earlier about backstories, when you run across an NPC from your from your backstory, it's interesting. If you can remember that NPC from session one, he pops back up in yeah. session seven. It's it's interesting. It's good. Yeah, I love it. No, it is. And you know, NPCs can be interesting without a voice. Yes. No, no voice. voice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, but that's going on a t-shirt. Yeah, ca- character quirks or yeah. memorable features or things like that. You know, I, we we've all watched a film or played a game, and mm-hmm. we all re- that one character that stands out. One that immediately, as you were talking, then I think back to his patches from the Souls games. Mm-hmm. Um, incredibly unique, as his entire motto was: he would tell you there was treasure somewhere and then kick you into a trap. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's all he did in every single Souls game. However. You'd still go over and like, yeah. go, oh, there's treasure there. You'd still have a look. Oh, yeah. Maybe he's changed. No, he, he doesn't. I um, always think of um, Herc from the Fallout, not Fallout, Far Cry games. Oh. He's been in every single one. <laughs> he's just mental. But I can't tell you what his voice was, but he's memorable because he's got that quirk yeah. and he's got that characteristic. You do fall into, you can fall into the traps of stereotypes, but I think if you're playing with your mates, you're playing around the table, yeah. it's good. As long as you're not being offensive, it's fine. Yeah. But just make, make, Making characters, maybe one's got 
It's got a limp. It's got a peg leg. Yeah, yeah. It's got it's got a metal arm. Just anything. Just make your NPCs memorable. Make them unique, and then players will remember them. And by doing so, will find themselves involved. Will find themselves enthralled by it. Will find themselves almost living in that live world you've created. Yeah. In The Witcher Three that I've played to death, and I will play it to death again and again and again. You will run through, every time you do a run through of your. It's not even a Witcher Three thing. You, you play your favorite RPG and you'll do a run through and you'll go, "Oh, I remember that NPC from last time." Yeah. Oh, because she does it. Yeah. And it's all to do with the, the the quirkiness and the uniqueness of it that you makes you smile and you go. It's like meeting an old friend and that's what keeps you involved in the game. Same elements and the same method using Five E, yeah. because it just it just does bring you get people together. Yeah, and you know we all like to get attached to our own characters mm -hmm. and have stories around them, as we've said. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, but you know, one of the things for me, I think, when I what I'd like to achieve as a DM is sometimes think I'd love to introduce an NPC, get people attached to them, and then just yoink all of that way. Game of Thrones them. Yeah. Just game of I would love that. Yeah, and, and, and that NPC doesn't need to have some dramatic voice or anything mm -hmm. like. It just needs to be a really well-told story around that NPC. Yeah, who then is involved with the party, who does interesting things, who's a, that's his own little quirk. Mm -hmm. uh, get everyone. Go, oh yeah, yeah. This guy's yeah, yeah, and kill him off. Yeah, I mean it's gonna break my heart, but yeah, that'll be I'm not fun. saying that's gonna happen <laughs> to him, but it's just. I think it can be one of the biggest parts of one of the most <coughs> important things in any adventure game, any TTRPG, and especially D&D, &D, mm. is that you can create an amazing world, but unless you populate it with interesting and quirky people, yeah. that amazing world's going to fall flat. We've all played games that have got amazing worlds that feel empty. That feel empty. And a well-written substance over sizzle, a well-written character that feels like it's got time and effort in it, over a flashy one with a catchphrase that you've written in 20 minutes. I think a lot of these points, I've just had a brainwave, they're going to come down to be, take time. Make sure you do your prep. If you're DMing and you want your place to be involved and be, uh, if you've not got the time, brilliant, smash them together, I'm sure they'll enjoy it. But if you want this epic adventure, this epic tale where you've built the world and everything, put planning in it, into it. Yeah. Don't over plan it. Get to the point where you say, you say to yourself, we, we'll just play it now and the world can grow with us. But... Yeah, NPCs, a great way to get people involved. Yeah. Yeah. And no voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than a boring voice. It is. Unless the, unless the character is boring. You uh, come across a boring librarian <laughs> and he's going, Okay, guys, I'm afraid the library's closed. However, well, apparently I do local radio. Ah. <laughs> oh. Can you see why I don't do voices when I do? <laughs> I suppose, it, like, you know, not everyone feels comfortable doing voices. No. Not everybody wants to put on silly voices. And why don't force people to do yeah. something they don't want? Yeah. You know, if you as a DM don't feel comfortable, don't don't let that happen. Yeah. Inhibit you. That's fine. We all have Cause, our own. Because while, while your while your players might appreciate it, if you if you feel uncomfortable, yeah. then you're not going to enjoy it. And if you're not enjoying it, that will come across yeah. to the players, and then. I've known, fortunately, I've not not been one of them, but I've known groups fall apart mm -hmm. because the DM wasn't feeling it, and it came from the players wanting him to do it a certain <coughs> way. A side note, which is nothing to do with what we're talking about, but just on the back of that, when you watch Dimension Twenty in Critical Role, you don't have to play like they do. You don't have to do it like they do. They do it, and amazing, and their stories are fantastic. Mm -hmm. You've probably worked out by now I'm a big Dimension 20 fan. But they also do it to entertain. They do it to yeah. a camera so that you will entertain, you will enjoy watching it. And doing something to entertain is different from doing something because you enjoy it. We, years ago, we tried, um, we previously mentioned we were both Magic the Gathering players. We tried to do so, a bit of YouTube and a bit of content for Magic the Gathering, and we thought, Quite naively at the time. <coughs> oh, it's just whack a camera up, play magic. Yeah. And it, I mean, I'm not even going to mention the name of the channel, but it's out there still somewhere. It fell flat on its face. Yeah. It was underproduced. Under, and in, in fact, the lessons we learned there have led us to be able to do this at a, at a better level. But ju yeah, but just take that away. Just remember, you don't need to. You could be the biggest Brennan Lee Mulligan fan in the world, but you don't have to DM like him. There are a million different ways to DM. And your group will appreciate you having fun 
more than you not having fun because you've they've asked you to do something. Just be yourself. That's it. Be yourself. Be yourself. Enjoy it. <clears throat> you find you find a lot of time as well. You might start off a bit shy, but then as you grow into it, mm -hmm. voices will come. More narrative based things will come. We're five or six sessions in now into our current campaign, and the the role playing out elements are coming through a little bit more. And you'll grow as a group, and you'll grow as a DM, you'll mm -hmm. grow as a player, and it'll just it'll just be cool. Number five. Number five. We've blazed through these today, haven't we? Have we? We 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 fly through them. We'll we'll put an extra episode out some out in the week to make up for the time we've lost. <coughs> this is for me. Sorry if I've sort of led on all these as well. The single most important rule I take with me to any table, whether I am DMing, playing, watching, anything, and it is a rule that's I think is in the book, but isn't an official rule. It's the rule of cool. Yeah. This is, for me, as the way I play, I think we're similar, the way we play is, is paramount. It is very, very good. And if, if you are a rules guy and you want to play to the letter of the law in the yeah. Happy Player's Handbook and the Dungeon Master's Guide, more, all, all credit to you. Fantastic. But I think if you sit around a table, you've got... And it's cooler to do something that might not necessarily be in line with the rules. Yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah I, I think it comes back to like that whole thing of being yourself, isn't it? Yeah. Know, you, know yourself and know your players. Mm -hmm. If you've got a group of people that like to do something that's a little bit yeah. off the books and yeah. fun, there's nothing wrong with going, well, just explain to me how that works. Tell me, yeah, that's fine if you want to do it. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit unusual. Explain it to me. Tell me all the procedure and process of it, and we'll try and find a way to make that work. Yeah. You say, well, I mentioned it all the way through. We, our group, our play group is narrative based. We like we like storytelling. We like role playing. Um, we do like combat. Combat is very interesting, and we love the way our DM sets it up. It's fantastic. But our DM will also say, "Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I want to run up this wall and do this and do that. Okay, my character's not set up to that, but it would be fucking yeah. awesome. We, I very much play D and D and D like I'm watching a Netflix series in my head." So I want combat and I want the things I do to be cinematic really, yeah. and awesome. I'm a rabbit that uses one ear as a fucking aiming guide. And it's just <laughs> that I've come to learn in the last year that there are there, there seems to be two camps of people. There's the people that want to play Rule of Call and there's the, and there's the people that want to play to the letter of the law. And there's nothing wrong with playing to the letter of the law. If that's the way you'll get your, your game, your group works, that's fantastic. When I originally first looked at doing a Gundam campaign, Mm -hmm. I know you could read through the rules and that and if you really wanted to take it to the extreme you can have people have the amount of fuel they've got in their suits yeah. you know the ammunition they've got you know mm -hmm. you can really draw on making a realistic hardcore experience yeah um, and you know what I should imagine in the right with the right DM that would feel incredible, amazing. I can't imagine like anything more tense than you running out of a valuable yeah. resource at the last time, at last That's, moment. Again, that'd be an amazing on the narrative side. That'd be an amazing yeah. plot point for a narrative. That the, the reason I don't do that is I ain't got time. No, <laughs> I ain't got time to plan. I ain't barely got time to plan the the sessions I run. Yeah, yeah. And then to add in that, knowing what every single one of your abilities yeah. for every single one of all six of my players does, as well as every one of the 200 NPCs and 400 enemies I've got written. I'm sure there's going to be someone that comments and going, oh yeah, there's this app that does it for you. Brilliant. Fantastic. So sign me up. Yeah. But I haven't got the time. I don't, I don't think, unless you're a full-time DM, which I'm led, I'm led to believe is an actual job you can be and get paid to DM. That's the dream. But unless you've got time to commit to that, rule of call it. Like I said earlier, do your planning. Make sure you plan your sessions. Make sure you're prepared and your world's written and your NPCs are written and you know what you're doing, or you've got a, you've got an idea of what you want your players to do. But if you haven't got the time to manage everyone's abilities or everyone's ammo or coins or whatever, don't worry about it. The rule of call will always be appreciated. Yeah, and you know, I know it is for us, I know that Definitely. is our sort of thing. It, it, it is by no means are we sitting here and saying, this is how This is play. the way. This um, is how we play. This is how we play. This is what we're going to be. We're going to tell you how we play and we're going to share our experiences. Might have gathered, people might have gathered, we're a little bit relaxed <laughs> <laughs> in our approach to things. So we, we podcast how we play. Yeah. Podcast how you play. Get that written down. That's, that's, go, that's going on the merch list. <laughs> that's going on a play mat. It's going on a play mat. Yeah. 
I've got a guy that was playing mats. Mm. Watch out for play mats. <laughs> wrong, wrong sport. Wrong, wrong game. That's a that's a card game thing. But yeah, rule of cool. It's important. Well, I think rule rule of cool could be interpreted to play how play however your group is comfortable. Yeah, because everyone's it. cool is probably. Different. I've never been cool. But no, no, probably, cool. no, I probably will never be cool. I kind of don't want to be. <laughs> but everyone's definition of what is cool and what isn't cool will yeah. be different. And you sit around a table with people that you know mm. and you're going to know what they like. Yep. And if that, you know, you can see probably in someone's face when they go, oh, I really want to do this. Mm-hmm. This would be really cool. Um, you can see the excitement in someone's face and you just yeah. think, yeah, is it to the letter of the, letter of the law? Meh. I would, I would say keep it sort of, and I'm going to use the term realistic in a game about pretending to be a goblin but <laughs> if your character think of a good example off the, off the bat then if your character has never picked up if you're getting disadvantage on crossbow shots yeah don't suddenly go right i'm going to dive through the air through <laughs> through a flaming ring and in slow motion with my eyes shut Ben, no because that's not yeah. gonna happen right and I know DMs will go, all right then, but the DC's 35, crash on, have a go, or yeah. you've wasted a turn on it. Be, be resourceful, be realistic, but if you want to do something cool, oh, your DM will yeah, say yes. Um, no, you're right. Rule of cool. It's do what you want with it. Enjoy. It's about enjoyment, isn't it? Yeah. And it's important, but the last thing I'll say, because we are, oh, no, it's finished about 20 minutes ago. If you try and find a way that everybody in the in the party would likes to play, because yeah. if you've got three people that love the narrative side and one of them's a rule, one of the fourth person's a rules lawyer, that rules lawyer is going to feel so left out yeah. and so confused. And so try and find that middle ground if you can. If you're lucky enough to find a group that everybody wants to play the same way, that's fantastic. I think that's what we've got. And yeah, I think we're lucky we're in that way. Lucky. But yeah, just find a nice way to play and make sure people are included. I remember no rules. <laughs> better than <laughs> boring rules. That is true. I will, I will give you that one. No rules are better than boring rules. So, on that note, mm-hmm. that brings us to our so top five. What did we call it? Well, I think it's almost a continuation of ways of enhancing yeah. the gameplay, but keeping mm. people involved and enjoying the experience. Remember the word <laughs> engaged. Keeping players engaged. <clears throat> We'll end on that. <laughs> I would like to just say thank you, everyone, for joining us again for episode three. That's yeah. A long Must time admit, you know, it's I'm well. enjoying this. Yeah. This is really good. We should have done this years ago. I know. Um, but thank you very much. Thank you for tuning in again. Make sure you look for us both on TikTok. I should imagine there'll be some graphics somewhere. Yeah, I know. I got the hair. I got the graphics working last time. So yeah. it's not me that does them. I just they just appear, and I'm just like I think it's some sort of witchcraft. Yeah. I went to study 11 years at Hogwarts for so. <laughs> 11, 7 years at Hogwarts. Brilliant. Next week's episode, we are hoping to do a bit of a Q&A. We feel like we've spoken at you guys for three or four weeks straight now. And what we'd like to do, if you guys are up for it, is answer some of your questions. So, down below in the comments, if you want your question answered, please drop us a que- put your question down there. And we will... Try and answer as many as we can yeah. next week. Um, we are going to ask for questions in other places, TikToks. Uh, we're going to reach out to a few people that we speak to, a few groups that we're in, um, a couple of discords that one of we, we might run or something. So please don't be disheartened if your question doesn't get answered. We will keep a log of them all, and hopefully in future episodes we will try and get we'll get through to yours eventually. Yeah. But please do send us in a question. We'd um, we'd, we'd like to make this a two-way conversation yeah. if possible. And, and, yeah. You know, you, You've seen us yeah. bumble our way through yeah. th- three episodes worth of content. So try, try and keep it D and D related. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I'll answer anything. But, 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 <laughs> I imagine one of the questions now being, "So, does one of you actually have an ex-wife?" Is it, yeah. <laughs> we were never married. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching, guys. Take it easy. Cheers. <laughs>